Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Kemmler. We have one of the greats here, everybody. Give a big round of applause for our guest that's going to be coming out in a minute. Mary Elizabeth Winsett. I want to hear another round. Let's hear it. <laughs> you loved her in Fargo, 10 Cloverfield Lane, and Scott Pilgrim. Now you get to see a darker side of her in the new film, All About Nina. In it, Winsett plays a self-destructive comedian attempting to make it big while living a kind of broken life. Let's take a look. Hello, I am Nina. Dating, dating, dating. Oh my God, it's so boring. I'll call you. You want to hear about all the embarrassing stories, like that time I had spinach in my teeth or my tampon fell out mid-kiss. OK. Um, What's wrong? Carrie, listen, I'm moving to LA. Can you book me shows there or what? Turn left. You have reached your destination. You must be Nina. Space is beautiful. I need trees around me. I'm water-based, so I need the balance. I'm whiskey-based. That's more my thing. Hi, uh, I'm Rafe. I'm not going to sleep with you. Just take it one step at a time. OK. I'm no longer married. I was. She broke my heart. You keep being honest. What's the matter with you? Hey, Nina. Comedy Prime. They're going to give one lucky lady their own one-hour special. Three impersonations, got it? Nina, this is Celine Dion. It's just Cher talking to you right now, and I believe in you. This next one is Jabba the Slut. <laughs> I met somebody. Didn't you say you were going to make me dinner? Did I say make you dinner? I meant order. It's funny and sexy and just the right amount of screwed up. Hey, what up, Nina? What are you doing here? Don't leave, don't leave, don't leave. No, no, hey. Oh. Yo, so this is what you want? You want men fighting over you now? Nina, the truth? will set you free. What if the truth sends you to jail? People seem to think I'm negative. Oh, watch it, bitch. Not the type of girl you'd want to bring home. It's a brand new world now. What's the real you? All in all, I think I'm a reasonably good person. Who's with me? Who's with me? Thank you. Put your hands together for Mary Elizabeth Winston. Hey. Hi. Hi, guys. Thank you. Uh, good to see you. Thank good you to see you, here. too. Thank Congratulations you on another great performance. Thank you so much. Uh, how did this come up, and what interested you in playing this character, which is not an easy role to play? Yeah, um, uh, it, it was kind of a surprise. I got sent the script through a filmmaker who I kind of knew over the years in passing named Pete Sollett. Um, he sent me the script and said, this is a script that my wife wrote. Um, she's collaborated with him in the past, but- Raising Victor Vargas, Raising right? Victor Vargas. Um, her name's Eva Vives, and she's written the script. She's gonna be directing it. It's gone through the Sundance Labs. She'd love for you to read it and possibly do a reading of it um, for Sundance. And so I read it just kind of thinking, oh, this will be cool. Maybe I'll do a reading of this script. You know, I wasn't really thinking about playing it for in a film. And then I, I just was so blown away by the character and the story and all the places that it goes and just all the challenges that it would provide me as an actor um, that I just wanted to meet Eva right away and, and talk with her about it and get her thoughts. And as soon as I spoke with her, I was like, oh God, if you ever make this movie, please let me play Nina. Because um, I wasn't actually able to do the reading, but I just said like, Let's do this. Let's let's make this happen. You know, they always tell uh, screenwriters and playwrights to, if you're going to write, if you make sure you're giving your actors things to do that they're going to see on the page, and they're going to go, oh, I just I need to do this. And when I started watching this movie, I was like, okay, yeah, it makes sense that she would do this because right on the page, right away, there's so much for you to tackle. It's all about an, a tough exterior and a broken interior and insecurities that you're masking with jokes and humor. So there's so much for you as an actress to really dig your hands into. Absolutely. It was one of those things that was so easy to say yes to because there was so much about it that I didn't know if I would even be able to do. And that's so exciting as an actor to be like, oh my God, I've never done this before. This is completely new territory. And then anytime you say yes to something like, like that, you inevitably become terrified at some point before you start shooting. What were you most terrified of? I think mostly the stand-up. I mean, all of it. Just just the, the range of all of it, the intensity of all of it. The character itself, she's much angrier and more intense and more 
kind of in your face, you know, than anybody I've, I've played before. There's there's a rage in her that I'd never really um, accessed before as like a person <laughs> or as as an actor. So that was scary to me. But then on top of that, the stand up and kind of knowing that I would have to do justice to that and I would have to seem like I really knew what I was doing. Um, it's interesting though because you're you're gen generally cast as sort of strong, commanding people. Um, and so it would, it made sense to me as soon as this started that like that you would be put in this role. Oh, that's nice. I guess that's funny. It's, I guess it's that one of those things where you, and I think as an actor, when you've been doing it as long as I have, sometimes you get stuck in what people saw you as when you first started. Like when I started, I was like as a teenager and people just thought I was like this innocent, sweet little like flower. And so I always, when I get scripts like this, I'm like, they want me to play this girl. <laughs> like, well, even, what? even when you did like a final destination, you were the yeah, final girl and true. the final yeah. girl in a horror movie there is an essence of strength that has to be projected, even though you are, you know, for better or worse, screaming most of the screaming. movie. Yeah, yeah, screaming and running. Um, yeah, I mean, it's nice. It's 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 certainly something that I, I like to be able to bring to the roles. I like being able to be sort of a flailing mess like Nina and figuring herself out, but still being able to hold on to that inner strength, you know, where you know you're watching somebody who at least has the potential to kind of get there one day. You know, that's, that's what I, I like. When it comes to the stand-up, did you go out and do any open mics to try to prepare? Uh, I thought about it, talked about it a little bit, talked to a lot of comedians. They were like, don't do that. Uh, well, no, they were all like, you got to do it, you got to do it. And I was just like, yeah, 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 I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll totally do that. And um, I just was just way too terrified. And then in talking to Eva, our director, she didn't really push me to do that. She really wanted me to focus on it more like as an acting piece, you know, like you got to become this character and figure out who she is and the comedy will come out of that. So I figured as long as she wasn't pushing me to do it, then... I'd, I'd go easy on myself in that way. How close did you come to doing an open mic and what stopped you? I think going to them stopped me <laughs> because there, I would go to see them or even not even open mic nights, but like small comedy nights. Um, we have this comedian that helped us out named Jamie Loftus, who's super funny, um, young comedian who would come and, and help us with all the stand up sets on days we were shooting that. And, and Eva and I would go see her shows and, the, and she was always hilarious. The people that she was performing with were, were hilarious. And half the time, there's like no crowd or a smattering of a crowd and they're not really giving you anything. They're not really responding. And I was just like, oh my God, th these people are like real comedians and they're really good at their jobs and this is the response they're getting. Like, I don't think it's gonna go well for me, you know? <laughs> now, um, I've, been, I've been doing this for like, I don't know, six or seven years now. And for a long time, I, I noticed that whenever female comedians would come on to shows, and I would always try not to ask this question, but producers would always be like, you got to ask this because they didn't know how to talk to comedians. And so the question would always be like, what's it like for a female comedian? You know, right. or what is comedy like? What is the world of comedy like right now for women? And women would always be like, it's such a tough question to well, answer. But I think in a lot of ways, women could maybe just direct people to this movie. Yeah, because so yeah. much of what your character is dealing with is a kind of boys club that has been that way for so long and how that affects the way that she approaches herself and approaches the world around her and where some of that tough exterior comes from. Absolutely. I mean, of course, every comedian is is there has their own experience, their own story. And I think that's probably part of what's annoying is that you're always asked, what's it like to be a female comedian? And it's like no one is monolithic. Yeah, yeah. it's like there is no female comedian experience, you know, that that sort of applies to everybody. But I think um, Nina's experience certainly encapsulates a lot of the things that are pretty universal in that world, which is that it's dominated by men, that women are typically deemed a little bit less funny. And of course that's changing. I mean, of course there's there's so many really successful, talented, hilarious women working in comedy right now, but the ratio is still pretty uneven. So I think um, even now um, as, a, as a female comic, you know, um, especially somebody like Nina who has her sexuality, she kind of wears it on her sleeve. You know, she's dealing with the constant um, advances of men, you know, men in the audience men who work with her um she's just sort of inundated with it and it's it's a little bit exhausting um so i feel like she tries to sort of be in control of it and use it as her power but at the same time she feels like constantly being like taken from her well her power is constantly being taken from her and also what she's using is to mask a certain amount of trauma that i think she feels and in a way that uh and i mentioned this while the trailer was on uh i think 
uh, we saw in Nanette in this discussion of how comedy kind of cuts short dealing with pain and trauma. And as great as she is at her craft, her craft in a lot of ways cuts her off from being able to deal with the, the issues that she actually has in her life. Yeah, I think Nanette was so incredible. I watched that fairly recently and I was so blown away. And I, I like to think that our film is somewhat of a sister <laughs> project to that. Um, stand-up special because they both sort of deal with this idea that stand-up comedy is is kind of a vessel for masking pain or for kind of turning your pain into art or turning it into comedy, tragedy into comedy. But but Nanette sort of breaks that open. It's like, well, if this is a mask for the pain, then we need to talk about the pain. You know, we, we, we can't just pretend it doesn't exist. Um, and I think it's so important and so amazing. And, and she, she did it in such a skillful, masterful way um, that I'm just absolutely blown away by. And I hope our film captures a little bit of, of some of, of what she was trying to say with that as well. No, I can't help... Uh, I don't think we can help talk about your film right now without talking a little bit about what's going on today yeah, yeah. and the um sort of uh hellish handmaid's tale nightmare that's happening uh at the senate judiciary committee with um the incredible dr ford uh testifying about her assault um committed allegedly by brett kavanaugh um because so much of your film is about trauma and is about moving forward and it's about um being made to feel less than i think by uh, men and about and by the patriarchy whether it's in comedy or in the world so what is it like for you to be sitting across from me right now talking about this work that you made and this is happening uh on the executive level in this country i mean it's it's kind of incredible we're sort of trying to to, to watch it between press activities today and stuff and trying to keep track of it all because um it's amazing to watch her get up and put herself through that or be put through that um, and to be so brave. Um, it's really moving and it's really moving to be presenting this film to the world at this time as well and to be a part of all of these voices coming forward kind of at the same time just saying and enough is enough, this shame that you know women have carried for so long and women like Dr. Ford who've had to live with this you know, for 30 years and finally just saying, no, you have to bear some of that shame. This is not my responsibility anymore. This is not our responsibility anymore to bear the brunt of this. This has to shift. Um, and there's a really amazing feeling in, in the air that all this is happening at the same time. And I'm, I'm really hopeful um, that that shift is happening. I'm really, really hopeful. We'll see where, where things go um, with this hearing and everything. But, but I feel like something could really change. Now, I feel like this movie, you know, it takes years to get an independent film off the ground. So I imagine you started shooting this, what, a year ago? Yeah, exactly, a year ago. A year ago. So when you started shooting this, I feel like a lot of the conversations we're having right now about not just women in the industry, but women <laughs> in, in society and, uh, and the role that, that the patriarchy plays in, in, in keeping women down and keeping their stories out of the forefront, uh, that wasn't even really part of the conversation yet? Was that something that you and, and the and the director were even kind of talking about going into this? You know, um, a little bit. I mean, I first signed on to the film six months before we actually shot the film as well. So when I first signed on to it, it was really, the conversation wasn't happening in quite such a big way. You know, I was really drawn to this story. It's based in large part on Eva's own personal story. Um, She's not a stand-up comedian, but the trauma that the character has faced in the movie is is true to Eva's life. So I was so um, passionate about being part of her story and being part of telling her truth and coming forward um, because I thought she was being so incredibly brave and in talking about something that she's never really talked about publicly. So that was really the core of it for me was this this personal woman's story and being a part of telling that. And now as time has gone on, it's become much more of a movement and this personal story is becoming the story of all women and the story of all of us and, and what we're all trying to talk about and move forward and um it feels really really amazing it's it's a really exciting thing to be a part of does it feel like you're part of a shift it definitely feels that way and it feels so important it's amazing to be in a film that that feels important like we need to be telling these stories we need to be ridding ourselves of these sort of shameful ideas of, of the way we're supposed to be as, as women and, and really metamorphosizing into something new. 
You know, there's a scene uh, in the film. Um, I guess I should segue a little bit. I guess this is a different conversation now. Yeah. <laughs> there's my segue. Um, there's a scene in the film that we see in the trailer briefly where you're doing impressions in the mirror, uh, and it's one of the scenes that uh, you're so great in because you're still charming and wonderful in a moment that I think most actors would not be able to pull off Thank that you. scene. It's an incredibly vulnerable moment where. You're not necessarily supposed to be funny. Yeah. You're doing these kind of raw impressions for yourself, and it's when a comedian is not funny. They're right. testing material, not even in front of an audience for themselves. What was it like doing that scene? How did you get yourself to the place to feel comfortable doing that? Because I could see most actors and most people being like, ah, how do I, uh, what do you want me to do here? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was certainly nervous about it, for sure. Um, but that's kind of exactly how I let myself off the, off the hook. I remember saying that to Eva. I was like, I'm just not going to worry about whether or not these work uh, or whether or not they're funny. I'm just going to sit in front of the mirror and try on voices. And, and, and she was like, oh, yeah, no, it's fine. It's just about that's, the, that's how it would really be. You'd really just be trying to figure out if something works or not. And, and maybe you try it a few times and you're still not happy with it and you can express that. And so I guess this whole movie I kind of just had to... Um, try not to judge myself too harshly and just and just go with it because it was so fast and furious and intense it was just like okay you're living as this person now just be that and um try not to judge whether or not people are going to think it works you know that's really all i could do as much as you're you're you know you're an actress and you have to do not impersonations but become other characters did you ever think that you could do impressions well, I always had like one or two impressions so that I did Celine casually. Dion in your back no, I never. I think I only ever had like, and, and there's not even in the movie. And I, I'm not going to do it now because it's just been too long. Um, but, <laughs> but um, I used to do like Kira Knightley a lot. Um, but that was sort of like a little too niche, you know, <laughs> to, to put in the movie. But there were a few, and Kristen Stewart, I kind of just casually, and Bjork, I would casually do every now and then. So I had a few, and I was like, maybe these. And then we just built off say, of that. I just, not to interrupt, I just say, like, I would never make anybody do an impression on stage, and I'm not going to make you do it now, but because you said such a niche person, <laughs> my immediate was like, oh, I really want to see this, like, weird niche it's impression. It's mainly a that facial have. shift thing that happens um, more than anything else. But, but anyway, so... S and I, and having been a singer, I kind of knew that I could manipulate my voice as a singer a little bit. So I thought maybe that might be a good place to go. And so Eva and I talked about like what singers would be funny and would maybe fit my tone of voice. And we just we just played around um, and hoped for the best, you know. Now there's some some big news that came out. I think yesterday or the day before, some casting news involving you. You are cast in this new movie, Birds of Prey. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Can you tell me what that is? No. Okay. I can't say anything about it. Big deal. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's a big deal, apparently. Yes, it is. It's sort of a spinoff of um, Suicide Squad. So it's um, starring Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. And it's kind of a girl gang. Um, it includes Huntress and Black Canary. And... Um, it's really cool because it's a superhero film, but it's really it's being directed by this director, Kathy Yan, who's a really cool female director, and all the main cast members are female. And I've never really known of or been involved with or been close to be involved with um, a movie of this size and caliber that is so um, consumed by women <laughs> in, a, in every way. So I'm really, really excited about that. What's the largest movie you've, you've been a part of? Um, I guess it would either be the Die Hard franchise or Scott Pilgrim was 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 quite a big movie. Um, Which is crazy because you watch that movie and it's not that it doesn't look big; it's just that it's such a unique such voice. A unique. I know it yeah. was it was like an eighty million dollar movie or something like that, <laughs> which you wouldn't think. And it you know didn't make that much money. In I the, imagine a know. lot of executives <laughs> getting that movie back and being like, I don't know what. To I do. think that's exactly what happened. They're like, What have we made? <laughs> What's happening? Um, but it stood the test of time, so that's great. Of course, yeah. Uh, I think it's my favorite Edgar Wright movie, actually. Mine too. Yeah. Uh, let's get some questions from the audience. Who has a question? Hello. Hi. Hi. So obviously you've had a really long career and had a lot of different roles. Um, so my question is, what do you look for when you're reading through scripts and you're deciding what um, roles and characters you want to take on? Um, I guess I don't really go about it that intellectually. I kind of just read something, and, and if I connect to it emotionally, that's, that's the most important thing to me from a story perspective and also a character perspective. And as I'm getting older, I think I'm drawn more and more to things that I, th I think are important 
in some way. It doesn't necessarily be, mean in like some highbrow idea of what's important, but just important to me on a personal level and that I think might be important to somebody else seeing it or might make a difference to, to somebody in somewhere, you know. All About Nina kind of fell into that category? Absolutely. All About Nina just like checked all, all of my <laughs> boxes for sure. Is it important? Yes. Do I get to do a lot of things? Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes exactly. Uh, next question. Hi. What would you say was the biggest thing you learned when filming about Nina? Oh, gosh. Um, that's a tough question. I mean, one of the biggest things that came out of it for me was probably my collaboration with, with Eva Vivas and, and the way that we were able to work together and create a character together, especially because she's so... Um, in many ways based on Eva, but she's also me and she's also this entirely new person. Um, so that was a really interesting way to collaborate with the filmmakers, taking each of our personal lives and ourselves and, and kind of combining them into this, this person that is neither of us, but is sort of both of us um, and all women and <laughs> in some ways. I imagine it's a, it was an incredibly close collaboration because you are in every frame yeah. uh, of the movie, every, every scene. Yeah, it, it was, I think, and, and I wasn't doing a lot of like picking her brain of like, tell me exactly what this feels like, or when, when this happened to you, what did that feel? But I was just sort of getting it sort of by osmosis of just spending all my time with her, which I think is what happens when you work really closely with, with somebody, as particularly a director. Um, and it just was a really great feeling by the end of it to feel like we side by side created something special together and, and meaningful and um, something that I think we're proud of on a deeper level than I've been proud of uh, anything else before in my career. Really? When did you realize that? Was it the process that made it made you feel that way, or it was when you saw the final film that made you feel that way? I think I think both. I think the process of it um, was so challenging and so fun and so um, emotional that that was incredible to be a part of. But it was also so emotional that I kind of kept somewhat of a distance from it mm -hmm. for a long time, like. Because I just felt like if I went too far into it, it would just be like we'd all just be crying every day, you know. Um, so I feel like I've only recently been fully like uh, embracing what it really means, and um, like ev with every screening, and I sit next to to Eva, we like we're like you know I'm holding her hand more and more, I'm feeling it more and more, kind of allowing myself to really embrace like oh we made something that really matters, you know. Do you uh, ever read reviews of your work? I do sometimes, yeah. Because I was reading a review today of All About Nina that I think was from maybe The Hollywood Reporter, and one of the things that they said in it was another phenomenal performance by Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Why haven't the studio heads made her the go-to actress for everything that they do? That's very nice. I did read that. That was very, very yeah. nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I caught I it. That. And guess what? The studios did, too. I'm in Birds of Prey. Yeah. I, you know, hey, it's, it's, it's not, not a bad time. Not a bad time. I'm very happy. Uh, one more. Hi. Um, first of all, I loved your dress. Thank and you very much. Today. Thank um, you. But actually, my question is about the movie. And um, just watching the trailer, there are so many fun moments and like scenes. And I'm just wondering if you had a favorite scene or moment that you filmed in the movie that you'd like to share or... I don't know anything else. Um, God, there's so many. Um, I'd say one that kind of stands out is there's a sort of monologue where I'm I'm practicing um, stand up in the mirror, and it's kind of similar to what you were saying, where I'm just sort of testing something out. But in in the movie, I'm testing out. I'm sort of being more truthful, I guess, than one I one really at the would top. Be. Yeah, 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 than I really would be on stage, and so it's it's sort of. Um, in the cadence of a stand-up routine, but the words are really just honest and without, I guess, the jokiness. Um, and there was something really sort of vulnerable and special about it, and and the way that Eva directed it, they sort of, um, they, they fixed the camera to one spot, and I just moved around the room, and I got to sort of choose at what points it would be my close-up, and at what points it would be the wide, um, just based on how how close I moved to the camera. So it was just a really interesting scene to be kind of in control of the performance and also kind of, of how it was being shot. And um, it just was something really kind of special about the whole, that scene. Uh, 
Um, congratulations. Thank you. Wonderful movie, another great performance. It comes out this Friday, all about Nina. I guess that's tomorrow. Yeah, I think that's tomorrow. I think that's tomorrow. Cool. Yeah, everybody give a big round of applause for Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Let's so hear much. it. Thank you.